Hi, John Rice, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, coming to you with an update on West Michigan, what's going on in the real estate market. And in this, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit of a correlation between the housing market and the economy and see how those align or don't align. That's what we're going to be talking about here in this West Michigan update. Thanks for joining in. I'm going to share with you my screen. I'm going to click over and you're going to watch what I want to share. So what's interesting about housing and the economy is that there is not a direct correlation between those. And I'm going to dig dive, dive deeper into that here as we walk through it. Uh, number one, as you've seen before, this is our pulse update. And uh, that's an acronym for being positive, upbeat, leading edge, share worthy, and engaging. If you like this, share it with people you know. I would love for them to hear a positive message about what's going on right now in our West Michigan real estate market. So I mentioned that there's not directly a correlation. Now look at this. This is home price changes during the last five recessions. So we've got 1980, 1981, 1991, 2001, and 2008. And what you'll notice is that during these times, three out of five actually had positive effects. Now, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper as to why 2008 uh, was such a different market than today. But first, let's talk about the economy. Uh, interesting poll, Reuters actually interviewed 45 different economists, and by nature, they economists, most of them um, had lunch and sat through many presentations. Uh, with enough economists to know that a lot of times they're a little bit more pessimistic. Uh, they consider themselves realists. Uh, most of them are not optimists, that would be a futurist. Anyways, if we're looking at uh, what they're saying, if you look at 22 of them, say a U-shaped recovery, okay? So meaning, is it gonna go right down and go right back up? No, it's gonna go down and then gradually go back up, but when it does go back up, U-shape, again, uh, a nice recovery. Then the next highest are people, uh, economists who think that uh, the economy is going to, you know, uh, come down as it has, and then shoot right back up, a V-shape. So what's, what I find interesting about this is 32 out of 45 economists expect us to have a fast recovery. That's great news. Now, what I also thought was interesting was this guy over here on the right who he doesn't know. So not sure how much longer he's going to be an economist. I thought that was an interesting approach. Uh, okay, so what else besides economists, who else is talking about this? Well, this is a quick chart to show you about GDP, uh, somewhat of a measure of um, the economy as a nation and uh, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo, there's represented on this particular segment. And what you can see is a lot of them are very much expecting their second quarter, uh, which we're you know, in now, uh, obviously not to be that strong because not a lot of business can be operating as normal right now, but they're expecting third quarter, fourth quarter to be back into positive territory, to be making up for what we're losing now here in the second quarter. And so, back on to the recovery. Now, remember, the economy and housing aren't necessarily in alignment. They, remember, they could go in different directions. And I'll show you why. So Allie Wolf, the chief, chief economist over at Myers Research, actually let, uh, had this to say, last time housing led the recession. So she's talking about 2008. This time, it's poised to bring us out, meaning that housing is going to have a positive impact on where our national economy is going to be going. And I think this is a key reason why. 53.8% of homeowners in America have at least 50% equity. That's incredible. More than 50% of them have 50% equity. So 37% of all homes owned are free and clear, and 26.7% of the mortgages have at least 50% equity. That's phenomenal. That means that we have a solid foundation. Anyone that we've ever worked with 
knows. We're going to talk about solid foundations when we're when we're looking at a house, but we're talking about that here as well. And solid foundation definitely applies to uh, how housing is doing right now. What are we? What did we head into this with? What are we coming out of it with? A solid foundation. This is another chart I wanted to show you. It talks about okay, what were the inventories like? How many houses were on the market when we looked at uh, things? You know, two thousand six, seven. Eight, ten. Okay, what was inventory like? It was heavy. There were a lot of houses. It would have been you, your neighbor, and like ten others on the street, all up for sale. But those of you that have been looking at housing know that has not been the case. We have seen exactly the opposite in today's market. As we headed into this, as we headed into our shutdown, we were very much in a seller's market. And what we're still finding today is that the inventory, even with those expected to, to hit, um, as we you know, have the executive order lifted, and we're able to start processing listings again, that's still gonna keep us in a seller's market. So there is that silver lining that's out there. We're gonna continue to be in a seller's market. Is it gonna be as robust as we were before? It's too early to tell. Most likely, we're not gonna see that spring gain that we typically see, or we might see a 5% bump in price over what we would have experienced the previous November. Um, we might not see that this year, but it's too early to tell. Right now, we're just kind of in that flat pending phase as we work towards getting this executive order lifted so that we can begin to get these uh, listings processed. Now, I know I've shown this slide before, but I think it has such an impact that basically the how this is um, brought to us by Robert Dietz. He's a chief economist at the um, National Home Builders Association. And he talks about the housing sector entered this recession underbuilt rather than overbuilt. That means as the economy rebounds, which will happen at some stage, housing is set to help lead the way. And look at this. When a person goes to buy a home on a national impact, that house purchase leads to 80, over $84,000 impacting the economy around that home purchase. Things like landscaping, furniture purchases, um, you know, incomes that are impacted by the sale of the home, the title companies, the real estate companies, the, the painters, the, the roofers, whatever it is, plus anything that might go into new building, it adds up to 84000 more than $84,000 per house sale. That's per one. So we can join together and truly uh, help Michigan and the nation get back on track. So what's going on right now in our overall setting here in Michigan? Well, right now we're seeing uh, the pre-market phase we're still having a lot of people go through that. I'm doing virtual uh, talks with people like, like uh, through Zoom or on the phone, depending on what their comfort level is. We're doing that. Um, for sale, there are some people that are listing um, and you can do that virtually. So there are ways to do that. If that's of interest to you, call me. We'll talk about whether or not that's the situation for you. Uh, if we fast forward about three weeks at this point, that's when we're anticipating that on-site showings uh, most likely would be able to handle probably with you know kind of protective gear on uh, gloves and face masks or whatever but that said um, you know if we project for three weeks and people can actually tour the home what does that mean when it actually goes under contract what does that mean when it's pending well if a person's seeing the home and you receive an offer from them it might be a little bit more it, it most likely would be a lot of a stronger offer than if they write on something and they had never seen it. So whether or not you choose to list virtually right now, that's up to each individual person. Uh, sales are still happening. Title processes, uh, title companies are still processing sales. Uh, mortgage companies are still processing mortgages. So um, you know, if you're interested in doing a refinance, yes, now is a great time. Interest rates are tremendously low. Um, and we're still processing those going towards sold which is excellent. We wanna to continue to see that help those sellers be able to move. 
Now, uh, with each of these, I like to bring something new to the table. And uh, what I have put together through uh, our, our franchise, Berkshire Hathaway, is uh, a lifestyle, real estate and lifestyle planning guide. This is a phenomenal guide. I'll walk you through a little bit of what you can find in this guide. Uh, millennials and Gen Xers, this walks you through points that might be of interest to you in your life right now and how to plan lifestyle and real estate and how those can coordinate. When you think about where you wake up in the morning and how that impacts you, where do you walk the dog? Where do you go grocery shopping? How do you work? We're all working a little bit differently than we were 90 days ago. How would that impact your housing choices? So this guide walks you through each step. Then we move on to early age baby boomers and later age baby boomers, walking you through those same steps as well. This is a very comprehensive guide. And what I find interesting is that often this is a piece that appeals to multiple generations. So you might have, you know, uh, a, a daughter and uh, yourself and then a parent that you look at this guide and say, wow, I could, you know, have my daughter fill out this section, I could fill out this section, I could fill this section out for my parents. And it has such an amazing amount of information in it that it really helps, I find, put some peace into helping people better plan their, their matching between life and real estate and how those can truly blend together to create the lifestyle that you want. So where can you find it? You can find it John, right on johnricefilter.com. Uh, when you go there and you click on our blog, you're going to be able to click right to it and uh, dial right in. And from there, you're going to be able to check it out. I've got the, the site all set up. It is a large file. So what you'll do is you just uh, enter in your information. I'll email it over to you. I'll email you a link so you can have that. Um, so again, that's our real estate and lifestyle planning guide. Uh, fresh off the presses and I uh, want to share it with you. I think you're going to love it. It's a great tool and I would be happy to, after you get a chance to download it, walk you through some of those things as well. We can set up a, a meeting and talk a little bit further about it. And then lastly, uh, one of our favorite things is looking at what's new on the market. A lot of uh, people out there almost get a little bit addicted to looking at the, the new stuff as it hits the market. Well, Michigan Real Estate Hub I've set that up to be a resource for you so that you can see everything that's going on. And uh, what I love about this is when you go to Michigan Real Estate Hub, you can actually click on waterfront listing and see everything that's hitting the market right now as far as waterfront. We're going to see more hit the market probably in the next 30, 45 days. But get on there and check them out. They're a lot of fun. And I'm here to be your resource. So reach out to me anytime. Uh, we can meet like this virtually over the phone, text and email. Uh, my clients know that, you know that, and that's what I'm here to do. I absolutely love what I do. I appreciate you joining and uh, make it a great day. Go out there, enjoy this spring weather, and have an awesome rest of your day. Talk to you soon.